Welcome to the Agents Lounge Podcast, where we talk all things real estate with the industry's top performers. Join us as we dive into the inspiring journeys of successful agents and uncover the secrets to their success. Whether you're a seasoned agent or just starting out, we got the tips and tricks to help you navigate the world of real estate. Brought to you by Airtegrity Comfort Solutions. So grab a seat and join us in the Agents Lounge. Welcome back to the third episode of Agents Lounge Lounge Podcast. Excuse me. Uh, I'm your host, Nathan Gaylor with Air Integrity Comfort Solutions, accompanied by Marco Salinas, our producer, and a co-host, Francisco Bermudez Jr. Yeah. Howdy. How's it going? We're doing great. And we have our special guest today, Violet Delgado, who is a real estate team leader of Violet's Realty Group uh, with Jason Mitchell's uh, Realty Group. Yes. It's a, it's a little bit of a mouthful. Yeah, no, it's that's fine. okay. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. Welcome, Thank Violet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So before we get into the nitty gritty, uh, just you know, I you did tell me that you uh, taught physics. So if, just real quick, what's a, a superpower? Uh, if you could have for a day, what would it be and why? A superpower, um, probably. Like lightning speed. Lightning speed. <laughs> Especially as a mom trying to get everything done. I, I wish I had lightning speed to get around. And oh, that's hilarious. Kids. I thought you were going to go like travel the world well, type of thing. Super, yeah. <laughs> and travel the world too, but yeah. Get it all done in one day. Uh-huh. Okay. So uh, just tell us a little bit about, about your background uh, before like getting into real estate. What, what did you do? Uh, so before I got into real estate, I actually was a teacher um, for seven years. And so you mentioned physics. That was the first year teaching. I taught physics. Um, and then after that, I taught biology for several years. And then I kind of ended my uh, education career teaching AVID, which is a college prep course. And so I okay. uh, taught high school the entire time. I mean, really loved education when I was in it. Uh, I even got a master's in education from Texas A&M, so I was like full into. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, for sure. So full into education, Um, but then COVID hit, and at the time I had a four-year-old and a two-year-old, and I was like, "What am I gonna do? I I don't want to send them to daycare. It's crazy world we're in." And so I decided to take a step back and just kind of be a stay-at-home mom. At, for a couple of years, mm-hmm. um, and I really enjoyed that time. Okay. And then, yeah. and then, yeah, it kind of steered me. You want me to go ahead and go? No, and that's talk the about? bridge into real estate, I assume, right? Yes, into real estate. So, um, while everybody was on social media during that time, I noticed uh, one of my wow. high school college and career counselors. I still followed him on Facebook. We still kept in touch. He actually helped me get my jobs in education when I w- was um, applying. Um, and I saw that he got into real estate, and I saw him closing deals like left and right. And I'm like, I don't see agents do that. Like, you know, they'll close several de- deals a year, but he was like. Every other week. Machine. Yes, back. yes <laughs> back to back like crazy. And I was like, okay, tell me your secret. What are you doing? So I gave him a call and I'm like, hey, I noticed you're in real estate. Tell me a little bit about it. And um, he. And he you left. were sold. I was sold. Pretty much. Yeah, I was sold. So he's like, hey. You were already pre sold by all of the transactions. Of, yes. I was yeah. like, wow, how does he know all these people? <laughs> and so, um, so, yeah. So he's like, go get your license and I'll take you under my wing. And. Yeah. the rest is history with that <laughs> okay that's uh that's awesome so like what uh, how did he get connected so i was gonna ask like what what are the really challenges that you face getting into it but i feel like a lot of people might struggle with having those connections so like what right. what was his key to like getting like what did you see when you came in like did he do networking groups uh just good advertising what was it well, he started his uh, career, like he was in education as well. And, yeah. and then on the side, he would do construction. His dad was a contractor. So he learned a lot about the construction world. And then he got in touch with the brokerage that I'm with now, the Jason Mitchell Group. Um, and he knew Jason personally. And he told him, hey, you know, start a brokerage in San Antonio, our own little branch. Yeah. Um, and Jason's approach is a little different than other brokerages I've seen, which is that he's established relationships with huge mortgage companies. Our number one is uh, Veterans United. Mm. 
And so he has this relationship with them where they give the agents referrals. Um, and so you could be, they call it network certified agent, where you get referrals from different mortgage lenders. And then we get to work those um, deals and help those clients. Um, and so that's what he did. That's how he got his start. And I think his first year, uh, Ruben, his name is Ruben Prieto. Um, he, I think he closed about 38 deals. Last year, he closed 42. Um, and a lot of those came from... Uh, referrals that we get from our brokerage and so he has a different approach so it's great for especially for new agents that don't know a lot of people haven't really networked yet and because it's hard getting into real estate especially if you don't have a huge network of people that you know right Um, and so this gives you the advantage to get in front of more people that you would otherwise not have the opportunity to you know, to know. Sure. Um, and then his philosophy is once I get you in front of these people <clears throat> and you, you know, help these families, then you build those relationships and they'll send you referrals. Course, and yeah. so from there, that builds your book of business. So, yeah. yeah. So what's a key advice for a new realtor? For like your opinion, what's a top, top one? I Definitely think find a brokerage that's going to help you just start off if you don't have a huge network of friends and family that would, you know, buy from you, I guess. Yeah. Um, and so I think this gives you kind of a leg up um, is finding a brokerage that will help give you leads and and that it's a lot of practice. So I feel like I'm very fortunate that um, I kind of hit the floor running mm-hmm. and with like a short amount of time, I was able to close a large amount of, of deals. And that gave me like a huge amount of experience. Yeah. Um, just, you know, yeah. going into yeah. it. So and I'll, I'll just follow up. Um, and how do you think being a teacher has helped you or, or teachers that are out in the teaching field? I mean, what yeah. would you recommend for so them? Frank used I feel to be like a teacher too. So I feel yeah. like the teaching skills that you gain in the schools mm-hmm. are very transferable to a real estate agent. Yes, a hundred percent. I mean, we well, we have the patience. That's number one. Oh man, <laughs> because yeah. Being in real estate, you have to have a lot of patience. Two, you're teaching your buyers and your sellers how to buy or sell their home, and so a lot of it is teaching. And so I feel like teachers already have those skills. We have the organization skills. We have the time management skills. Um, we have the people skills. Um, so all of those skills are easily transferable into the real estate world. Um, and I think that has given me a huge advantage just with working with my clients because I use, literally, I'm there teaching them every right. step. This is what's going to come next. And I prep right. them beforehand of sure. what to expect, what good things can come out of this deal, what things to look out for. And you're just teaching. So, um, yeah. yeah. So That's definitely. a great question. Yeah. Really good question and really good points that she brings up because you don't you you would think that those two are very, you know, far apart, mm-hmm. but the reality is is that there's there's a lot of connections between that and and being a teacher is a great um, precursor to real estate success. I think you know as long as as long as you have that desire right to go out and right and and do well and succeed. For sure. Yeah, and I think teachers are literally they're ha- the hardest workers yeah, out there. And sure. so actually two members on my team are former teachers. So that's kind of like the prerequisite to get on my team. It's <laughs> yeah. like, have you been a teacher? Okay, I know you're going to work hard. Right, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> um, and so um, Good point. I know they're going to do well because they have all those skills. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yep. No question. So, I mean, it sounds like you had a great start. It, but is there like anything... Uh, that you wish you would have known from the beginning that you know now, like maybe a, an obstacle or barrier that you ran into when you were first getting started? Um, I think there, it's good and bad with like my time management. Like I really wanted to get into real estate for um, just the flexibility of it. And I think going in, I wish I would have just kind of figured out my days a little better. Like, okay, I'm going to kind of block schedule my day because I kind of was just working all the time and always on the phone, making yeah. calls. So I wish I would have just started like, okay, from this time to this time, I'm going to work on, you know, these items. I'm going to I'm gonna call my clients. I'm going to check up on them. I wish I would have had that in the beginning kind so of set up. So you use block scheduling now? Now I use block scheduling, yes, yeah. as much as possible. Now I still get interrupted, and I'm I'm not there yet. Where some people like will turn off their phones. Oh yeah, but um, <laughs> I definitely will be like, okay, I'll call them back. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, if you're a lead, I can imagine that you get pulled in several different directions, right? So it's right. just like if you're on a block schedule, you're like, 
telling yourself you're supposed to be doing this, but you get another call that pulls you in another way. Right. So the, yeah, organizing can be tough, right? Yes, especially for my team. Like I always answer the phone when they call me. Um, that's something I learned from Ruben as well. We always joke because every time I call him, I'm like, okay, quick question. And it ends up being like 15 minutes long, but um, he always answers the phone for me. He always answers my questions. And I think that was has been a huge help with, you know, being able to, um, just have a great successful first year, yeah. Um, yeah. two years. All right. Um, I, w I would like to dig in, uh, for some, maybe a little insider information. Okay. Um, so like how would you handle a property that has been on the market for like a, just an extended period of time without any offers? Um, for me, I I've had situations like this before. Um, I think always, if you have a seller, you have to kind of set them up in the very beginning of what's to be expected throughout the process. So, you know, the first thing I tell them is there's three criteria in how your house is going to sell. One of them is location, which you cannot change. <laughs> the second is condition, which depending on your funds and what you want to fix, you know, that just kind of depends on what you can do with the home. Yeah. And then the third is price. So yeah. if you have a you know, you're set on a certain price, but it's not moving. I always recommend like, hey, we're going to have increments. If the house has been on the market for, you know, over three weeks, let's do a small price drop yeah. or and then kind of set them up to know that I'm going to ask in the next couple of weeks because we need to move forward with selling your home. Yeah. The longer it's on the market, the more time people want a great, greater deal um, out of it. So your buyers are going to come in with lower offers and we don't want that. Mm. So we try to get them to move as fast as possible. But at the end of the, uh, at the end of the day, I do leave it up to them at the price they want to be at. Sure. But I tell them, but if it doesn't work, we got to, we got to do those price drops. Yeah. I kind of have to like whisper in the air a little bit, just like <laughs> I just tell them stuff that they, they don't want to hear, but yeah. yeah, it sounds like it's important to set realistic expectations from the beginning. To, right. uh, that way you're, you're not just what the kids say, like gassing them up for, you know, the, the best uh, oper or, um, the outcome possible. Exactly. Yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, Hmm. That, that's definitely nitty gritty. Yeah, yeah, no, it's a it's a good question and a good response too. Um, <clears throat> it, it's kind of piggybacking off the last question, but what what is your strategy for dealing with difficult or uh, uncooperative clients? Those don't those don't happen. That never those happened. never happen. <laughs> Violet doesn't have those. I don't have those. Oh wow! No, Congratulations, <laughs> they're all perfect. They're yeah. an anomaly. Holy. Well, I'm, I mean, <laughs> I've had a lot. The majority of my clients, honestly, I feel like I'm really blessed because the majority of my clients, even if they are the type of client that needs to call me every day, mm -hmm. they, I will answer the phone for them. I will talk to them. So I haven't had a situation where I've had somebody be like really confrontational with me. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we kind of set off. Like when we first initially meet and they know and I talk to them and they get to know me, then I don't know. It's you just, just kind of click. So if we click, we keep working together. If we don't click, well, then. Like maybe try to try to cut it off like earlier on. Right. right yeah. Yes. It's like we're just not vibing here. Let's both save each other. Yeah. The hassle of this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's a that's a good move because otherwise it's just like wasted energy. Right. And yeah. I've had that happen to me where I'm like, you know what? I don't think we're a good fit, but I know somebody who would there be you a go. good fit for you and I will tr refer them to a different agent and they work awesome together. So yeah, like, I'm putting you with those pit agents. Bull. <laughs> the pitbull agent. Exactly. But they work. Put you in your place. Uh -huh. Oh man, I I don't want to put <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot, but do you refer them to agents that you like or <laughs> Yes, I do, but I know that they can handle them. Case uh, by case. Yes, yeah, yes. It's case all by case, case by case. I look uh, at their gotcha. personality. And I'm like, look, we just don't mesh well, but I know somebody will, that will mesh well. And they've closed a deal together, and yeah. it works out, and everybody's happy. So. That's great. Mm -hmm. No yeah. I don't take offense. So I'm yeah. just like, I got you. You know, some, like I mentioned, some personalities just don't click. That's right. You know, and that's, that's exactly okay. right. I, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, anything that's customer service related, even being right. a teacher, you have to have some tough skin, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, dealing all with... teachers have had students that just you couldn't get along no matter what. So, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you still work through it and figure out a way. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, though, I mean, bringing it back to teaching, I feel that you're very good at nurturing, like, those situations, like, mm -hmm. when they come up, mm -hmm. like, the training, like, how are you going to talk to them? Yeah. How are you going to set up the expectations? I mean, that's a very valuable skill. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, you're How right. It's classroom cooperate. management, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's the same thing when they teach us as teachers. Like you got to set up your class for, you know, not that I have roles or anything like teachers do, but you set up those expectations early on, and um, you kind of prepare your client early on, and then it kind of saves with the shock later if something comes up because they're like, oh, okay, yeah, that I knew that could have happened. So yeah, mm-hmm. very true. Because all deals have complications; they never run. You know, 100% smoothly. So, yeah. Uh, one more slight piggyback. Uh, so, can you provide a specific example where um, you've negotiated a better deal for a client or clients? Um, yeah, actually, um, I I had one of my friends that I worked. Um, one of my friends actually taught with. She was a teacher too. Um, so it was during the time when the market was pretty crazy, um, and so. Um, I ran some comps for their home, and I know um, her husband was like adamant that he thought his house was worth like five ninety nine. And at the time, I like talked to him. I brought him some comps. I'm like, I think it's worth um, six twenty. Mm. And so he's like, Ah, oh, that's. I think who would pay for that? That's like crazy. <laughs> um, and then we waited a couple months, and I pulled the comps again, and I was like, Actually, I think I could sell your home for six fifty. And he was like, Oh my. Like he didn't want to, <laughs> he didn't want to do it. He's like, who would do that? I, I didn't, he just, he had paid probably like 300 K three years before for the home. Yeah, wow. Now he put, did put some money into a pool and other things, but uh, you know, but like you said, the market was the crazy. The market was crazy. Yeah. And so yeah. we put it on the market and within a couple of days we got a cash offer at 675. Um, oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> and you know, closed in a few weeks and he was just in shock that, you know, that his house would sell for cash so fast. Um, and and so, then you were like, but let's talk about buying the next house. <laughs> which I yeah, did right? help him buy the next house. I'll talk a little bit about that, too, because yeah, that was a perfect crazy segue. Situ- uh-huh, that was a crazy situation, too. So <laughs> they after that happened, um, they moved into an apartment to kind of settle and they were looking for a house in Alamo Heights. And they're like, OK, we're kind of we're going to wait and see until we can find something perfect. Well, during that time, the interest rate was had started going. Going up. Oh yeah. Um, and so, and the prices were still up too. Yes, so it was yes. kind of a crazy time. Um, and this particular home that they wanted to purchase, um, it was priced. Uh, it was priced high. Um, comps weren't. They weren't matching up. And so we threw in a lower offer. They accepted. But then once we got under contract. Um, we had to discuss the roof because mm. it was a metal roof mm. and the owners had put in a claim with their insurance for some hell damage, just like cosmetic hell damage, but they used the money to remodel the restroom. Oh, yeah. sneaky. Yeah. So <laughs> what happened? So my buyer's insurance is like, we ain't going to cover that roof. Mm. Um, so... My client was like super adamant, like, well, then they need to reduce the price by the quote that I give them. And so we got a quote, $30,000 for a new roof. Wow. And they're like, well, how about this other one that's $20,000? We're like, no, pretty adamant. So um, I was able, we were able to kind of stick to the, our guns, yeah. um, him pushing me yeah. <laughs> as well. So he was like, oh, come on, we got to do this. And so they lowered the house wow. by 30K. So they got to get it. They got into that house with equity. So they built Which, another room instead of that. I know. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, the roof can wait another. Class. Yeah. So the roof, well, uh, no, the roof was all cosmetic. And I think when they took out their insurance, they only got like 8K for the cosmetic. But uh, the... Their insurance was like, sorry, if in the future something happens, we are not going to cover it. So, right. mm. uh-huh. so they got to get a, another price reduction of 30K. So I think off the price, the listing price, it was like 75K off. Nice. So that. Too shabby at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they got two great deals on both ends. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. I, I bet he's going to refer you some business if he has Oh, yes, hired, he does. Sure. Yes. And, yeah. and his wife is like one of my best friends. So. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Um, sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, how do you? This is uh, definitely for listeners, but like, how how do you stay informed about the like ever changing market and just uh, market forecast? Uh, do you have a specific source or multiple sources that you go to, or is it all by ear? It's all for us. It's all by ear, and then just always being in the field and kind of seeing how things are going. I think because we're all, all our, myself and all the agents in our brokerage, especially here in San Antonio, we're, 
we're working like crazy all the time. So mm-hmm. we are, we can figure out how, mm-hmm. you know, the market is changing because, you know, I, I don't write the same type of deals that I used to when I first started to now. And I've only been in the industry almost two years. So they're yeah. definitely very different. So it's all by being in the field and then talking to our division president and then um, just listening to our um, our broker, Jason Mitchell. He'll, he'll, yeah. he'll do coaching calls. And so we're listening to that too. So, But it's mostly like being in the field and, and figuring it out firsthand. Yeah. Do you have a recommendation for people like who, who are like considering getting into real estate, how they would keep up with it maybe? Do you, you have a recommendation? I, um, you, if you don't, it's cool. I just kind of put you on the spot with that. Well, I, I mean, it, I like listening to my broker's coaching that yeah. he does weekly. So okay. I don't know if it's public. I think it might be, but I know it's definitely for the people within our, our brokerage. I like listening to that. Very motivational yeah. and um, gives a lot of great advice. Um, okay. So that's what I like listening to. So is your group or uh, Jason Mitchell's, uh, either or, are, are y'all involved in the community? Do y'all do philanthropy? Uh, is there anything that y'all do? Um, so I myself, we like to get back to teachers. So for mm. like my team, um, we just did a teacher appreciation breakfast mm. um, for one of the local elementary schools here. Yeah, nice. um, And then I was like, you know what? A great idea for a giveaway would be like a gift card to Amazon for their classroom and one mm. for themselves because wow. <laughs> uh, so we do some giveaways. So things like that. Um, and then so always being trying to keep the teachers. We love our teachers. So yeah. those are things. Are you guys do. doing any kind of recruiting at the schools as far as trying to find new new agents? Do you have a do you have an official process of that or just more like what you just mentioned? The teacher appreciation. Just more stuff. teacher appreciation, yeah. Yeah. Because that could still lead to a conversation, right? Right. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, yeah. I really appreciate the Amazon gift card. Thank you. <laughs> Let's have a little conversation. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It would seem like you guys would be really good at, at you know, setting up a system for finding your next superstar within that world, you know, because right. you guys are, I'm, I've met some other teams and they're like, we're all military, mm, you know okay. what I mean? And so, but you guys are like, we're, we're the teacher squad, <laughs> yeah, you yeah know? for sure. So it is a really, that's, a, I, I mean, I think that's an interesting um, niche that you have and as far as an angle, mm-hmm. you know, that you're coming in at. And I could definitely see how... Once you're like, hey, this was a former teacher, this was a former teacher, you know, and then the the success stories right. of all of you guys, right? Mm-hmm. That would be something that would, I think, be very enticing because, um, you know, again, my family has a background in that world. We know other people in that world. And a lot of the teachers are still being, you know, overworked, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you know, and I think that there's probably a lot of them that are always looking for those opportunities to escape, Right. right. Or they can come to AC with me. <laughs> <laughs> that too. Right. Right. Career. Not quite as sexy, but no, I understand. Yeah, definitely. Some people like to get dirty. Yeah. People like to get down and dirty, man. Yeah. Like yeah. dirty jobs. It's Remember not, that show? It's not dirty. We're not plumbers. <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little dirty. Some of the pictures that you've posted on Facebook are a little bit dirty. Yeah. Let's be honest. He's like, here's the worst roach infestation I've ever seen in my life. And oh, yeah. And you're thinking people are going to jump on board? I don't know about that. Come on. Don't be <laughs> You might want to make it look a little bit sexier than roaches every week. Yeah, we have... Um... We're going to work on a calendar. <laughs> um, is it going to be a nasty calendar? Or... Oh, we, I mean, it, it, we'll try to keep it PG uh, as much as we can. Time off, um, breakfast every other week, every nice. other day. Nice. Yeah. And vacations. They don't offer that in, in real estate. Yeah. For sure they don't. Um, what else do we do? Potty break anytime you want to. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> just go behind the shed. <laughs> as long as you're behind the shed, it yeah, doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah. So <laughs> Just watch out for the bees. One of the benefits, oh. yeah. <laughs> and then you get to go on the sauna every once in a while. Up in the attic, <laughs> uh-huh. I think yeah. you have successfully sold all the listeners on why they need to contact Violet <laughs> about being a real estate agent. <laughs> Well, at the same time, equally, we respect what you guys do 100% because, yeah. man, that's that's tough work. It's still hard work. Yeah. It's rewarding work, it but it's rewarding. hard work. Yeah. So we'll stick with, you know, I'll do my work from the from the coffee shop. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so lastly, just uh, maybe something that you do to decompress a uh, hobby outside of work. When uh, your phone goes on, do not disturb. Uh, the time block is self-time. Mm, I hardly have any of that, but when I do, because <laughs> I have two little, I have two young kids, but 
Um, the thing I really, I don't really have any hobbies either, but the thing I like to do for self-care is at least once a year, sometimes twice a year, I make my husband book me a hotel stay at Hotel Emma and I stay there and oh, I yeah. relax and it's like Kind of a staycation. Best. Kind of like a yeah. staycation where yeah. I can... Like, I'm not woken up at 6 in the morning yeah. <laughs> by any kiddos, and I can watch whatever I want on TV. Yeah. And, um, Mimosas and brunch. Exactly. I was going to say, brunch at, brunch at Southerly. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, I think that's, that's what's good. attached to that building, isn't it? Mm-hmm. I thought it was. Southerly is a... It's supper. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Got you. Yeah. Yeah, it's That's a, a good... beautiful place. It is. And they have that library. They give you two free cocktails when you get there. They have Gosh. your little wind down where they bring you tea at night. Mm. It is like... Are you taking best. notes for your wife? Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. January on ja- in January they have specials. It's like half off the room. That's go. when I go. Oh really? Mm-hmm. Noted. There you yeah. go. And then the spa, the hiatus spa is like my favorite place too. So. Oh really? That uh huh. Is that is that a part of it? Uh, it's in the Pearl. It's 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 not connected, but it's like really walking distance. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And just the farmers market there in general is just gorgeous yeah. on the weekends. Yeah. Yeah. It's a so beautiful place. It is beautiful. Good choice. Mm-hmm. To go escape. So. I just go escape for the for a day or two. I try yeah. to book two. My husband's like, okay, one's like the max, but <laughs> come back. Don't leave me here. With <laughs> um, but it's good. But that's that's, that's awesome. what I try to do. My husband's the one that has all the hobbies, so I don't have any. <laughs> ah, hey, your hobby is work. That makes you well, a hobby. very good worker. <laughs> yeah, my hobby very is good work. Agent. Very good agent. Yeah, <laughs> in the agent's lounge. In the agent, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. but my hobby is working. What do you mean? Exactly. <laughs> Working and staying at Hotel Emma. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Uh-huh. And mom duties. And all my and mom, mom duties. duties. Yeah, all my mom duties. But, yep. but she's, yeah. She's just things. in mom mode right now. Mom and work mode. So Mom and work mode. That's all. Your time yeah. will come eventually. And yeah. still teaching mode, uh, like with just with real estate. And then, oh, I to, wanted to mention too. So one of my former students is actually on my team as well. So oh, still a former teaching. student. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Yeah, so. A- I did not expect for you to say that. Mm-hmm. Did that come from you? Like, was that your connection? Yeah. You, you reached out? Mm-hmm. So she was my student. And I taught her. It was a college prep course called Avid. And um, she had messaged me like, hey, I think I want to get into real estate. You know, she, I was like, get your license. And so um, she started, she joined my brokerage first. And then once I created a team, then she hopped on my team. And mm. she's been doing well. Um, That's great. Uh-huh. She's closed a few deals and yeah. and is actively working with buyers as well. So cool. And she does that while she's in college. So oh, her dang. real estate's it, part-time for her. But yeah. she's still doing really well. So good awesome. Yeah. What's she going to college for? Uh, communications. So yeah. will tie in uh, perfectly. That, w- that was kind of my realm, too, a little bit. Okay, communications, yep. Uh, well, yeah, a little bit more uh, politically driven, but yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, Ms. Delgado, thank you for uh, taking the time to sit with us today and uh, yeah. Yeah, in the interrogation room with the pod squad right here. <laughs> well, thank you so much for having me. Great info. Me. Yeah. yeah. Thank Everything you. you shared was awesome. Um, I don't have... So that does it for another episode of the Agents Lounge. Uh, Thank you all for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.